So I needed some really big calendars for future planning. And what I did was use what I already had, which were some old pictures that weren't gonna, I wasn't gonna hang up anywhere, but I liked the bones of the frame. So you could get the same look if you were gonna find uh, some old pictures at a thrift store, for example, if you didn't have any on hand. But um, let me take you through the steps and show you what I did. Now the first step is to take it apart and see what's inside so you know what you have to work with. Mine just had simple staples on the back, so I pried them up with my scissors. I discovered that the print is actually mounted to a cardboard backing, so I couldn't remove it and put it away in case I wanted to save it. I wanted a white background for my calendar, so I covered the cardboard with fabric cut from an old sheet, because that's what I had. Paper, felt, wallpaper, or whatever would work. I used painter's tape to adhere it to the print so I wouldn't damage it. I have no plans to use it again, but you never know. I pulled it as tightly as I could, attempting to get it wrinkle free. What I picture in my head doesn't always translate well to practicality, so I have to do a mock-up. One, to see if I like what I'm picturing, and two, so I can make changes or adjustments if needed. In case you're wondering, I searched Google Images to find a blank calendar template that I liked, and I imported it imported it into Microsoft Publisher. There I could set the dimensions to fit the frame and stretch the calendar to fit. And as you can tell in this clip, I printed it on scrap paper and taped it together. That's my mock-up. I could have measured the spaces and drawn my lines, but I didn't trust myself. So what I chose to do is extend the lines on my mock-up before I began. Can you see those little pencil marks? So I'm ready to draw my line, so I positioned it just right, making sure that I could see the horizontal line placement on each side, because that's what I lined the yardstick up against. With my black and white theme going on, the Sharpie is fine, but wouldn't washi tape be a nice option? After all the horizontal lines are drawn, I then repositioned it so that I could see both the vertical line marks at the top and bottom, and repeated the line drawing process. Add the days of the week, but don't put the numbers or the name of the month. Those are the things you'll want to be able to change without taking your frame apart. I wanted to see if I could get away without painting the frames, but that was a no-go. They had to be black, period. Of course, with all spray paint projects, you want to be outside or at least in a well-ventilated area. And another pro tip is to make sure you have old shoes and clothes that can get paint on them, just in case the wind causes problems or in case you're just flat out accident prone like I tend to be. I chose a glossy black since that's the look of the other frames in the room. If you're new to spray painting, you need to know that it's best to use short, quick strokes so you don't get drips. You'll have to make several rounds, of course, but that's the best method, period, amen, the end. And don't forget to get all the edges, too, you know, the tops and the sides and the bottom. And after it's all dry and reassembled, hang it on the wall and put it to work with dry erase markers and sticky notes. Years ago, when I had three teenagers living in my house, I used this frame sitting on an easel propped up right before the circular staircase in the old house. And it fit the decor with wallpaper behind it instead of just putting something white. So this was a memo board and I would actually stick sticky notes on here to remind the kids of things they needed to do. And back here, <laughs> there were certain reoccurring things that always came about like taking your laundry up. So uh, the note is long gone because this was so old, but the, the little setup is still here. And I had a note that would say, you know, Time to take laundry up, which meant they had to go to the laundry room and get their stack and take it upstairs to their room. So I have another one over on this other side, and I cannot remember for the life of me what that note was supposed to be, but you get the point. So I guess the moral of this video is go raid your attic. Go see what you have that you could transform into a useful memo board or calendar for your home today.